Chapter 10 Desert World Vogel stepped back in a panic. The sand covered his feet, but had stopped pouring in through the open hatch. A ray of light shone in through a gap at the top of the mound. He looked back at Daniel for some clue about what had just happened. What is this? he barked. In the dim sunlight of dusk, Daniel noticed his earring stuck to the wall next to him. He pulled it off the wall and studied it briefly before reattaching it to his ear. Three variables, he thought, and pulled a fresh orange notebook from his back pocket. He recorded the time and began scribbling notes as quickly as he could. Fate was too stunned to speak. Vogel shielded his eyes and leaned his head out of the hatch. Boy, climb up there and see what's happened. Daniel ignored him and continued taking notes. Vogel stumbled over, grabbed him by the shoulder, and tossed him toward the hatch. Daniel managed to get the notebook stowed away again and crawled on his hands and knees up the incline of loose sand. More poured in, and soon the entire floor was covered. The gap at the top had grown larger. Daniel climbed the rest of the way out. He stood ankle-deep and searched the horizon for anything familiar, but there was nothing. The air was hot, dry, and completely odorless, which gave it a sterile, dead quality as if nothing had been alive there for a very long time. Dunes stretched to the horizon in every direction. He climbed onto the top of the cutter for a better view. It was only protruding from the sand by a few feet, but that was enough to make it the tallest thing for miles. Daniel spotted something a short distance away and dropped back down to investigate. The going was slow through the loose sand. After a few minutes, he reached it. The bleached bones of a dead squirrel stood half buried. The tail still had a bit of fur, but the rest was nothing but bone. Empty eye sockets stared back at Daniel, and he noted that they still managed to look mischievous. Daniel's hair began to stand on end, but it was not from fear. He looked up at the horizon. Distant lightning illuminated a dirty orange cloud stretching from the ground, high into the atmosphere. The storm was far away, but coming closer. The wispy hairs on Daniel's forearms stood up as well, and he realized why. He hurried back to the cutter. Fate was standing on the top of it in mid-argument with Vogel. You madman, whispered Fate grimly, you've destroyed the earth. Nonsense! We're in some desert! That's all, Vogel said disagreeably, and turned his attention to Daniel. Well? he demanded. Daniel ignored Vogel and instead addressed Fate. Mr. Cordonnier, you should get down from there. Fate seemed taken aback by this and was about to ask why, when lightning from the approaching storm came close enough to make them all jump. Right, he said and leapt down into the sand. Daniel was already digging at the pile by the cutter's hatch. It's not our earth, he said, as fate joined him. Vogel overheard. What does that mean? he demanded, and tried to stomp over, but stumbled on the loose ground. He recovered and pulled Daniel to his feet. Answer me, boy. Where are we? It's an alternate universe, said Daniel, as if it were obvious. I think he might be right, said fate. Wasn't there a full moon last night? Vogel turned to see what fate was staring at. Low on the horizon opposite the storm was a crescent moon. He relaxed his grip on Daniel, who resumed his digging near the hatch. Fate saw what he was doing and dropped to help. Another lightning strike even closer was followed by a clap of thunder loud enough to make the cutter vibrate. The sun had descended to the horizon as the sandstorm neared and finally blocked the final slivers of sunlight. Daniel and Fate got enough of the sand away to close the hatch again. They tried to trap Vogel outside, but he saw what they were doing and pushed his way past, locking the hatch after he entered. They stood in the pitch blackness and listened to the whistling of the wind as the storm passed. Daniel was careful to keep his earring away from the wall in case a lightning strike hit the cutter. The storm raged for over an hour before the wind finally went still again. 
Not a drop of rain had hit the cutter, but several of the lightning strikes were close enough to make the walls and floor vibrate. Daniel's earring buzzed, and he heard a voice so faint that he couldn't be sure if it was Madison. I have to go to the bathroom, Daniel announced. That's not my problem, boy, grunted Vogel. The cutter's hatch squeaked as Daniel opened it. The night sky was clear, and without any light pollution, it showed more stars than Daniel had ever seen. You shouldn't go out there alone, Fate said, not really wanting to go out himself. Daniel climbed up onto the open hatch and out into the night air. Fate grumbled and followed him. They awkwardly trudged a few dozen yards away in the loose sand, before Fate stopped Daniel. That's far enough, Daniel. Let's not get too far away from the cutter. There might be another storm coming. I don't really need to go, Daniel said. I heard Madison before, and I didn't want him to hear. Fate was stunned. You can talk to her. All the way out here? He looked at the desolate horizon and added, Wherever this is. She hasn't said anything I can understand yet. Let's give her a few minutes, suggested Fate. Daniel pulled a bottle of water from his backpack. I also didn't want to share this with him. He drank half and passed it to Fate, who was careful not to spill any of the precious liquid. What do you think we should do? asked Daniel. To get home, I mean. Fate stroked his beard and crouched to think, Our options are limited. We could keep walking and find a way out of this desert, but it could go on for hundreds of miles. We could try to get the gun away from Shadrach, but that comes with an element of risk. He sighed. Or we could wait to be rescued. This really isn't our Earth, you know, said Daniel. It is a strange place. I'll give you that. You seem pretty clever. What do you think we should do? I think we should turn the cutter back on, said Daniel, and see if it takes us back. Fate thought about it for a moment. I think whatever we do, we should do it in the morning. Everything's better, and safer, in the daylight. Now there's a pearl for you, Daniel. Madison's voice came through the earring much louder than before. Even fate could hear it. Daniel, can you hear me?